Hey guys. So a friend came over to my house and rang the doorbell. As I opened the door, she asked me how old my children were. I told her, I have three children and the product of their ages is 72. The sum of their ages is my address. My friend looked at my address and said that she still did not know their ages. I told her, I would like to give you more information, but I have to take my eldest child to soccer. She now knew all their ages. How old are the kids? The simplest way to solve this is to figure out all the prime factors of 72, since it was mentioned that the product of their ages is 72. So what exactly are prime factors, and why exactly do we need them? Prime factors are factors of a number that are themselves prime numbers. Sounds kind of confusing, so what exactly are prime numbers? Prime numbers are natural numbers greater than one that are not a product of two smaller natural numbers. Still confused? What exactly are natural numbers? Natural numbers are positive integers, one, two, three, to infinity, but does not include zero. Now that we got the definitions out of the way, which may or may not have clarified things for you, let's move on to an example to better understand this. The prime factors of 72 are two, 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 three, three. In other words, two times two times two times three times three equals 72. Now both two and three are prime numbers since they are only divisible by one and themselves and nothing else. For example, six wouldn't be a prime number because it is divisible by one, six, two, and three. One times six is six and two times three is six. The fact that two and three are factors prevents it from being a prime number. So why exactly did we need the prime factors of 72? We can use the prime factors to figure out all the possible ages of the children, which we will refer to as iterations moving forward. The first thing we will do is to make child one equal to a one-year-old. By leaving child one fixed as a one-year-old, we will figure out all the possible combinations of child two and child three. We can also make child two a one-year-old to begin with therefore leaving child three to be 72 since the product of all three has to be equal to 72 and one times one times 72 equals 72. From these examples, the yellow highlighted numbers will indicate the number or numbers that are being used to calculate the specific child's age and the red number, which is crossed out, will represent a number that we cannot use since it was previously highlighted yellow and used on the previous child. Now that we got the first iteration, we now need to change the value of child two. But how do we go about figuring out what that number is? This is where our list of prime numbers will come in handy. We will select the smallest number from the sequence, which in this case is two. We will make child two equal to two. And then the remaining numbers that were not used will be multiplied together to get child three's age, which would be two times two times three times three which equals 36. Now the next number we will choose for child two will be three. We will now multiply the remaining numbers that were not chosen for child two to get child three's age, which would be two times two times two times three, which equals 24. We keep following this sequence until we have exhausted all possible combinations of child two and child three, with child one being fixed as a one-year-old. Now let's elaborate on the and so on below to better understand what is going on. To give you a more detailed explanation of the previous example, we still have child one equal to a one-year-old, and we will show you how to go about getting all the values for child two and knowing when to stop before you start getting duplicate entries. Looking at our sequence of prime numbers, we start selecting the smallest possible values for child two. The first and most obvious would be the number two, as shown in bullet one, the next most obvious would be the number three, as shown in bullet two. From this point on, we will have to do a little math to figure out the next smallest numbers, as can be seen in the remaining three bullet points. We won't continue past child two being eight years old, since as shown below, we are now duplicating the ages. Child two below is nine years old, and in the last bullet point above, child three is also nine years old. Now we will make child one fixed to a two-year-old, which is one of the numbers from our sequence, and figure out all the possible combination of child two and child three. We simply have to follow the same steps from the previous example 
And if you require more time to understand, you can simply pause the video and go through the examples and explanations at your own pace. Last but not least, we will make child one fixed to a three-year-old and figure out all the possible combinations of child two and child three. Child one equal to three is as far as we can go since three is the largest number from our list of prime numbers. And therefore, we should now have all possible combination of ages for all three children with no duplicates. At long last, here are all the iterations for the ages of the children without any duplicates. The brain teaser had a lot of useless information. There were only a few key sentences that were required in order to solve this problem. And one of them was, I have three children and the product of their ages is 72. Now this sentence was very important in order to get the first three highlighted columns that you see, which is the individual ages of the children. The next important sentence was, the sum of their ages is my address. If we ignore the my address part of that sentence for now, what this sentence tells us is we require the sum of the ages of all three children, which is the last column highlighted in yellow. Then we have the sentence, my friend looked at my address and said that she still did not know their ages. Now, if my friend looked at my address, she knew what that number was. And when she looked at the number and she still didn't know their ages, that would only imply one thing, that there was two numbers that were equal, and that is the number 14. So my address was 14. And when she was looking at the sum of the ages, she saw that two values had the number 14. And therefore, she still wasn't aware of what their ages were. If it was any other number besides for 14 in our total sum column, she would have right away known what their ages were. The last sentence that helped solve the brain teaser is, but I have to take my eldest child to soccer. Eldest child implies that one child is older than the other two. If we look at the two rows with a total sum of 14, the first one has two children who are at the age of six. The term eldest child cannot apply to this row. Therefore, the answer is definitely the second row, which has children of ages three, three, and eight, where the eight-year-old is the eldest child. Although the explanation to solve this was longer than it needed to be, the intention was to give you the knowledge and tools you require to solve more complicated brain teasers in the future. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe, hit the like button, and click on the notifications icon so you don't miss any future videos.